Doing a minute long. Hi guys. It's another cold but beautiful moonlit night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Monday night here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. And uh, oh yeah, before I get going, uh, it is Monday, December 5th, 2022. Before I get going, I need to do a better job of, uh, of acknowledging my patrons. I want to thank a big thank you to Raise1283 for their kind support of whatever it is I do <laughs> with my life here at Collapse Chronicles. Uh, as I, I know I don't pay it. My, I, I, I know I don't play the Patreon game by you, you know sending you all of these messages and whatnot because I just don't think you want all that crap uh, it, it, anyway. But despite the fact that you might not hear much from me on Patreon, I really, really appreciate uh, anyone who uh, has ever supported what I do here. Uh, on Collapse Chronicles. Obviously, I do not do this for the money. This is not a monetized channel, as you know. And if you appreciate what I do here, it's basically, I think, I, I think pretty much my, my Patreon uh, probably covers my tequila. So instead of buy me a coffee. It's buy me a margarita. So I would say my patrons keep me in margaritas, and that is very important. So, and I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Anyway, but with that pleasant task aside, again, welcome Raise 1283. Uh, <coughs> you know, I've been saying for days that I'm going to be doing this article, uh, covering this article I found in medium.com. What will the collapse look like? It is a long involved piece. A uh, little bit of a spoiler alert is that nobody knows what the hell the collapse is going to look like and it's going to look like, it's going to look different to different people. You go down there, I've, I almost did this article from this fellow uh, who's down there in Haiti, this journalist down there in Haiti, who actually lives there, uh, probably getting ready to leave. And if you live in Haiti, you are witnessing the collapse, as the guy is saying. Uh, it's, it's right outside of your door in your face. So anyway, I am going to get there, but every time uh, I decide I'm going to do that, it's like something else pops up in the Daily Digest. So uh, we're going to put off what will the collapse look like for another day, which means we might find out tomorrow what the collapse looks like. I'm going to let the little dog go collapse into bed here. And uh, so today in my medium daily digest of doom, and it was a good one, a great way to wake up on Monday morning. Uh, I thought about running the gradual apocalypse that starts out, we have lost the future as anything other than an increasingly dangerous place. And uh, that could certainly be, uh, be from Haiti. Uh, how did this Haiti one start? Uh, the one from Haiti, it's actually from BBC. Yes, I I I anyway. Uh, <laughs> That, 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 that's, that's another one. I mean, it's even t almost too brutal for me. But what we're going to do is we're going to hear from a fellow that I have discovered here uh, on Medium. His name is Patrick Metzger. Patrick Metzger has 2.2 thousand followers. Well, 2,201 because I am now 
one of his followers. Patrick describes himself as a dilettante, smartass, and an apocalypticist, not not a uh, a uh, a pock, uh, Good Lord, my tongue is tied. You know the people full of hopium, apocaloptimist. Patrick Metzger is not an apocaloptimist. He is an apocalypticist. And I, since this is a family show, and I don't use the, I try not to use the F word. I'm going to edit this just a little bit. <clears throat> Take it away. The multi-headed super crisis that will only get worse. We are all going to get screwed and no one is buying us dinner first. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. All right. <clears throat> Take it away, Patrick. <clears throat> it's an exciting time to be alive. Inflation soaring, markets crashing, pandemics raging, wildfires blazing, and everything from sriracha to tampons is vanishing from the shelves of your local glutton mart. This is a suboptimal situation, not least because I like sriracha. But what's suboptimal, indeed downright dangerous, is the idea that these interconnected disasters can be neatly categorized and addressed independently. It's this approach to problem solving that leaves us playing whack-a-mole with catastrophes, except the moles are on fire and the hammer is made of cotton candy, and we're not playing the game so much as staring at it sullenly and complaining that it's too expensive. So you're asking, how are all of these crises connected? Uh, could it be they're human caused? What is the connection between all of the crises on the planet? They have one cause, humans. Well, eight billion causes. There's eight billion reasons for all of the crises on this planet. So, uh, of course, he starts off uh, as everybody does now with the human cause climate crisis. I've, been, I've written about this many times, as have more articulate, successful doomers here on Medium. But do you also write poetry, Umer and Jessica? You do? Oops, never mind then. But since each day's news feed reveals exciting new aspects of our planetary dumpster fire, it's worth a few more bullet points of disaster to hammer the point home. If you're thinking about retiring to Scottsdale, Beth, I guess it means Scottsdale, Arizona, bring bottled water. Why would anybody in their right minds be thinking about retiring to Scottsdale, Arizona? But anyway, if you are thinking about retiring to Scottsdale, bring bottled water. Western America is drying up suffering from the biggest mega drought in 1,200 years. It's estimated that 42 percent, where it comes over this, 42 percent of the drought stems from climate change brought about by human greenhouse gas emissions. Contributing to this unfortunate aridity is a series of heat waves that have been melting already shoddy infrastructure across the U.S. And though most Americans will be indifferent to it, Europe and Asia are also experiencing dangerous, disastrous temperatures. <clears throat> Remember when wood smoke was, let's roast marshmallows, Mabel? Not 
we shouldn't be able to smell that from here, should we? I'm, on, I'm only going to give you one link, okay, two links, about record-breaking wildfires, but trust me, it's frigging chaos out there. There's a bunch of links in his articles to, you know, to more serious articles. <clears throat> and scientists have learned that wildfires were a major contributor to ecosystem collapse in the most comprehensive extinction of all times. So that is something to look forward to. Disasters are expensive, which brings us to the economic crisis. As goes the ecosystem, so goes the economy. Yes, goodbye ecosystem, goodbye economy. Inflation is at a multi-decade high and wages are not keeping up. In response, central banks raise interest rates on the premise that people have too much money to spend. This premise is fundamentally flawed. Prices are not rising because of excessive demand, but because of insufficient supply. <coughs> and while there are numerous reasons for that. A growing factor is the ab above mentioned global heating. Drought and flooding are making chickpeas more expensive. An excessive heat is driving up the price of pork in China and killing cattle in Kansas. In the big picture, global weather disasters cost $329 billion last year, money that is no longer available to harden up on our melting, collapsing transportation and power infrastructure against tomorrow's heat waves and hurricanes. Just in case you think Homo sapiens might get their shit together and work together to stave off our imminent extinction, the best evidence suggests we're not going to do that. Do you think so? Because of the social crisis. Instead of science and common sense, humans, and American humans in particular, are turning to tribalism and magical thinking to cope with current cascading crises. To right-wing media, the end of civilization is not a challenge to be overcome, but an opportunity to keep their army of ignorati clicking on ads from my pillow and Applebee's. The talking head cases of Fox News and their satellite shit slingers spew a rancid slurry of racism, science denial, and conspiracy ideation designed to cow a terrified audience into supporting their own exploitation by politicians who despise them. With the masses bred and circused into compliance, GOP demagogues used their partisan in courts decades in the making to reshape America into a Twilight Zone version of the 1950s, except with porn. The climate crisis is ignored or denied and the economic crisis is blamed on immigrants or a powerful, dangerous, and wholly imaginary left. The actual ineffectual left spend their days adding pronouns to their LinkedIn profiles and enforcing diversity in Netflix period pieces then congratulate themselves and call it a day. 
generally, I fall into the liberal camp or at least work around its periphery, sighing and looking disgruntled. But these days, I find myself unimpressed. You cannot address problems you do not acknowledge. Uh, don't get me going on the lefties. So where do we go from here? All right. Where do we go from here? Without immediate and concerted action straight off the cliff, studies suggest, and he has links to these studies, studies suggest that the end of civilization could be about two decades away. The whole planet, but especially America as the world's most powerful failed state, needs to overcome doctrinal differences and follow the science on climate change. It seems more likely, however, that President Joe Biden will mumble and sleepwalk his way into history. That leaves the 2024 field to Trump or some secondary sociopath who will ignore science and use social polarization to advance their inexplicable agenda. Even if the right could be convinced to focus on something other than policing the sex lives and bodily autonomy of others, the investment in clean energy and the cost of lifestyle changes required to avert disaster would be enormous. People living paycheck to paycheck in a collapsing economy cannot pony up the cash and the 1% would rather invest in rocket ships and hidey holes in New Zealand. That doesn't mean we should not try though, because it's better to go down in a noble effort than die of fear and apathy. We can have conversations. We can be politically active. We can do more than shrug and accept our fate. But he doesn't exactly uh, say uh, what that is. Uh, <laughs> in, in, anyway, uh, Patrick Metzger, he sounds like a good guy. One of these disgruntled lefties. Imagine being a disgruntled lefty in the year 2022. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we try not to get political here on uh, on Collapse Chronicles, and, 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 and I do have to bite my tongue quite a bit. I, I think there's some confusion by people listening to me bitch about the, the uh, lefties all the time, uh, that, that I am not or used to be or whatever a lefty. Uh, you know, <laughs> if these are our two choices, uh, right or left or in the middle, put me over in the narrow left uh, band of the bell curve is where I have it. Inhabit is the extreme left edge of the... Uh, bell curve, which, anyway, I'll, I'll shut up here. As I say, this is not a political channel. And let's keep it that way. We actually, I actually have uh, Trump voters. Uh, we, we have several uh, Trump voters here uh, at Collapse Chronicles. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, you're, you know, uh, if a, if anyone who ever voted for Donald Trump uh, wants to come over and learn something that you're not going to hear on Fox News, uh, this is a good place to do it. Anyway, 
get out there and enjoy your multiple cascading crises while you still can. Bye, guys.